So guys, now we enter into the third part where we want to find the resistance or the equivalent resistance for this cubical arrangement of resistance for the two adjacent corners over here which are point A and point B. Now definitely if you want to find the point A and point B Kebichka resistance, we need to take or connect a battery across the point A and B. So definitely the current which enters the circuit is going to be I and the current which exits the circuit it has to be I. Now we need to arrange or understand the symmetry which is involved over here. Again we need to divide the entire part into two parts such that both the parts get the equal amount of points and the resistances. At the same time the terminal should be on the opposite ends of the two parts. So here the best axis along which we can cut this part is going to be the plane which is exactly at the center of the figure. That means something like this. Exactly at the center of the face ABGF as well as G, uh, C, H, D, E. That face and that face, you cut the face exactly between them. Now, what will cut karne pe hoga kya? I can say, the current A se ye point tak ja raha hoga, wo same jayega yahan pe. So, let's call that current as X. Now, if you understand, from A to F and A to H, there are same resistance connected. So I can say the current which will flow from A to H will be same as A to F. That means I can call that current, both of them as Y. And definitely by mirror image, I can say AH is mirror image of BC. And so the current will be exactly same, but opposite in BC. And AF is mirror image of GB and so the current will be again exactly the same but opposite of AF. So we got the currents over here. Now the further part is quite interesting guys. So please pay attention to it. Here when the current uh, Y reaches point F, definitely it will split between FG and FE. But here these two points are not symmetrical. Can you see that? Instead, FE and DG are symmetrical, no doubt about that, because they are the mirror image of each other. But FE and GF or FG are not symmetrical. So you cannot actually divide the current Y into two equal parts as Y by 2 and Y by 2. So what we have to take is, assume that the current going from F to E as Z. So we can say the remaining current goes from F to G as Y minus Z. I hope this is clear to you, everyone, guys. So if agar F E K beach mein Z hoga, to it's obvious that between D G, which is the mirror image again, usme bhi current Z hoga, and so that will be the current Z in the opposite direction. Now similar thing we can do again for this current Y, jo A se H ja raha hai, current Y, again it will distribute between H E and H C which are not having a mirror image or symmetry. And that means again the current will be distributed. But now please pay attention. Jesse, A say F and A say H were having one single resistances. And so we took F and H to be equipotential. Similarly, F say E and H say E are also one resistance away. And that will also be equipotential, which means Jobi current F se E jayega, utna hi current H se E bhi jayega. And so I can say that is also Z. And so guys, H se C, the remaining current which will go, will also be Y minus Z. I hope you understood this part. So important thing over here to notice, the current Y basically, jo current aega, wo equally split hoga F or H ke liye. 
और वापस इक्वली मर्ज होगा लेकिन जितना करंट आया था पूरा का पूरा करंट नहीं जाएगा बिकॉज देर इज अ ब्रांच नोन एस एफ जी एंड देर इज अ ब्रांच नोन एस एच सी एंड दैट विल कंज्यूम सम अमाउंट ऑफ करंट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी कैन नॉट अज्यूम दैट वॉट एवर करंट वाई इज कमिंग टू पॉइंट एफ द सेम करंट वाई विल नॉट गो टू पॉइंट ई इन सिर्फ सम करंट जेड विल गो टू पॉइंट ई नाउ If we go further, we can say at point E the two incoming currents are Z and Z, and so definitely this will be two Z, which will give from E to D. Now D pe can I say already Z is going out, two Z is coming in, so the remaining current is also the Z, which is also a symmetrical figure. Check it out, guys. E H is mirror image of D C. As per this plane, so definitely the current in E H and current in D C must be equal and opposite, and so this will also be Z. Now, if you concentrate, Y minus Z plus Z should give you Y, and Y minus Z plus Z should give you Y, and Y plus Y plus X should give you Y. So we got the complete equation ready. Now here. If you are clear with the direction and the magnitude of the current, so we can go ahead with it, and we can apply the first step as KCL at point A, which is the starting point, guys. So if I apply KCL, I can say I the incoming current is equal to x plus y plus y, which are the outgoing currents, and so for me I is x plus two y. As my equation number one. Now, what we are going to do is we have x, y, and z, three variables. So we need to find some relation between them, correct? And so we are going to apply KVL in a loop where I will have only y and z, so I can directly find the relation between them. So here I am going to take d e f g d as my loop. So I am going to apply KVL for loop. D E F G D. I repeat, D E F G D. And the moment I go from D to E, I'm going in the opposite direction of current, so it is going to be plus two Z into R. From E to F, it is again opposite the direction of current, so plus Z into R. From F to G, we are going in the direction of current. So minus y minus z into r, and last g to d we are going in the opposite direction of current. So plus z into r, and this total will be equal to zero. Now can you see the r is common for everyone? We can cancel that r throughout. So r gets cancelled, and we have zero is equal to two z plus z minus minus plus z plus z. That is two plus one three. Plus one four plus one five, so five z minus y, and so I can say z is y by five. We got a relation between z and y very clearly. Z as y by five. Now if I apply KVL where I can get the relation between x and y, that will help me a lot. So I'm going to use the equation or the loop as a b c. H A. So the second KVL I'm going to apply is for A B C H A. And for this, if you go from A to B, we get negative x. So minus x R. From B to C, we are going in the opposite direction of current. So plus y R. From C to H, we are going again in the opposite direction of current. So plus y minus z times R. And again, H to A, we are going in the opposite direction of current. So plus Y R gives you zero. Again, if you concentrate everywhere, you find the R as a resistance. So we can cancel it throughout. So we get minus X plus Y plus Y minus Z plus Y is equal to zero. So if we take X on the other side, we get X is equal to three Y minus Z. Now definitely we know the z as y by five. 
so we can substitute z as y by 5 over here itself and we get 3y minus y by 5 that is 15 minus 1 14 y by 5 so can I say y is 5x by 14 now once we got the relation between x and y we can use that relation over here in equation number 1 and if we do that we get i is equal to x plus 2 times instead of y we can put 5x by 14 so 2 1s are 2 7s are we get 7 plus 5 12x by 7 as i or i can say x as 7 or we can keep it as it is or yes we can write x as 7i by 12 now once we got that now we can just apply a simple KVL or a simple basic equation for this particular loop as you can see that this is the EMF E and if we apply KVL for this one loop the smaller loop which you can see over here which have only two terminals so I can say A, B, A via the battery. We can say very clearly that E is actually equal to X times R. I hope you got this point. And X we know it is 7I by 12R. And as we have done the previous two times, here also we can say that if this battery is connected to point A and B, I can say the entire resistance of the circuit can be represented as RAB, which we want to find. So we can draw a circuit something like this again. This will be the circuit where we have current I, the equivalent resistance RAB and EMF E. So here we can write E is equal to I times RAB. If I resubstitute this over here, I get I times RAB. The I gets cancelled and your final resistance RAB is 7R by 12. And that becomes your final answer. So guys, basically all the three derivations, I hope you have understood. The first derivation stands for the diagonally opposite ends of the cube for which we got the resistance as 5R by 6. Then we did the second one as the phase diagonal of the cube for which we got 3R by 4. And last for the adjacent corners of the cube for which we got 7R by 12. I hope all the three derivations which we did together, you are clear with it, with the symmetry, with KCL and with KVL. Thank you so much.